Khabib Nurmagomedov. He has not been cleared to fight for his scheduled 25-minute battle with Tony Ferguson, the UFC official. Tony, we appreciate you taking the time to come talk to us. If you can, run us through your day and how you found out Khabib was out and you would not be competing on this card. And this potential impact on the health and safety of UFC athletes, staff, UFC and fans champion. around the world. He was scheduled to face Habib Nurmagomedov Tony for the Ferguson, world title. Uh, hurt himself, he tore his LCL. In I'm gonna speak I can eat you. You, you have no sand. condition. Who are you? You're flat you footed, you, you have no rhythm, guy. and you're one as dimensional. As you, you get hurt by your street. team, man, there we go. Today is my last fight here in the news. Mark my words, bro. You're gonna get the real of for doing. I don't even care. Sometimes a fight is destined. Competitors set to engage in violent, unfettered warfare. Trilogies. Hell, even quadrilogies. Epic rivalries that define weight classes. Wars that transcend known competitive feats. But what happens when the seemingly strange facts of life besmirch destined rivalry? A nefarious set of circumstances had fate separate two men from creating history. This isn't just part of the fable. This isn't just a select slice of history. This is the whole unfiltered story. This is the tale of Tony Ferguson versus Khabib Namegamedov. Now let's start at the beginning. Who the fuck lets <laughs> their kid yeah, exactly. wrestle a bear? So how old are you here, Khabib? Nine You're nine. nine. A child wrestling a bear. It might seem strange to us, but this isn't a land understood easily. Детские воспоминания об отце у меня остались такие. Был всегда режим, были определенные правила, всегда совмещалась учеба с тренировками. Это было всегда каждый каждый день нужно было и тренироваться и учиться. Abdulmanap Namegamedov, a father, a leader, a retired military veteran. He saw the path laid out before the children of his village. Dagestan isn't an easy place to grow up in. The mountains know only violence and struggle. Abdul wanted a better life for his family, an escape from the tangibles that tried to corrupt and influence young men, turn them into monsters. Dagestan is a region of instability, of war and division. Russian security services have prevented a series of terrorist attacks in Dagestan. A large-scale operation by hundreds of Russian special forces. Next, the trouble stirs again in a restless Russian republic. Margaret Warner has our report on the latest turbulence. Violence in the North Caucasus has been on the upswing over the past two years, waged by Islamist rebels bent on challenging Russian primacy there. It wasn't supposed to be this way. Abdul had one mission, turn children into men, keep them away from violence. Was the relentless training set in place by a father in the isolated Caucasus mountain range was a necessity in order to avoid corruption and extremism. The USA offered a young American-born Mexican-made Tony Ferguson freedom, the chance to choose who he was going to be, the opportunity to become whoever he wanted. And perhaps it's strange that despite the free will to walk any path in life, Tony still pursued the relentless and rigorous world of wrestling. Ferguson was a gifted athlete, performing at a high level in multiple disciplines disciplines, but wrestling is where he excelled. The grind of college wrestling cannot be overstated. It's a mill that grinds down young competitors. It spits out hard, grizzled and dedicated men. It's no wonder a pantheon of UFC fighters often have American wrestling backgrounds. Whether the sport attracts men who are resilient and hardworking naturally, or the training imbues in them these qualities, it doesn't matter. The end result is the same a dangerous and weathered man by the end of college. Whether it was the Friday night lights or the sweat-lined wrestling mats, Tony was a product of America's individualism, whilst Khabib was sculpted by the desolate altitude of Russia's ruthless and unforgiving mountains. Tony's ambition was built on the American dream, a land that tells its inhabitants you can do and be anything you want as long as you put in the work. And Khabib instead was tailored and manufactured by his father to be a ruthless, near-perfect competitor. Tony left college a decorated wrestler, Khabib a champion Sambo practitioner, 
and despite such differences in culture and upbringing, the two were setting in motion a series of events that would have them destined for a collision course with one another. Young, hungry and driven, the two set their sights on a new sport. The pair took to the sport of MMA well, and soon they were on the verge of cracking their way into the UFC, but their entrance into the organisation followed very different paths, and needless to say, one was forged in a melting pot that would scorch weaker men, and the other was carefully, meticulously nurtured. Tony's UFC story starts in Las Vegas, a city which its foundations are built upon land soaked in blood of competitors who gave it all inside of rings, cages and octagons. Tony's path in life was headed for a house on a Las Vegas street. The Ultimate Fighter needs no formal introduction. The house in which the reality TV show takes place stands as a monument to fighters who are willing to traverse true adversity in order to claw their way to a UFC contract. There is no harder way to earn a place inside that eight-sided cage. Separated from TV, internet, family, friends and the outside world, competitors are stuck between four slabs of concrete that make up a crucible of hot-headed alpha male fighters, all there for one thing and one thing only. The catch is, each and every one of them present to each other a clear and apparent obstacle to the attainment of that dream, a dream to be a UFC fighter. Season 13 would see Brock Lesnar and Junior Dos Santos helm the two teams and guide their fighters to a six-figure contract and a spot in the UFC roster. The quality of fighters that the Tough House spits out is undeniable. We have seen many fighters be churned, chewed and spewed out the other side as future champions and top five contenders. Whether it's a place that builds mental fortitude or it simply attracts the most vicious and concentrated fighters is unknown. All that is known is the tenacity of men that tread their path into that Las Vegas house. The quietness and introspection that the house encourages has often produced some spectacular outbursts. We have seen fighters break from the pressure, crumble and toil with their inner demons, demons that are unbearable without the emotional crutch of family and friends. Unfortunately, Tony was no exception. He had spent his birthday away from his family, and mix that with the stress of three killers lurking in the very walls of his newfound home, waiting to take his head off for the very same destiny he had in mind for himself, it is no surprise that he cracked. You good? Are you good? <laughs> He's looking at you. Are you, are you really getting serious? Tony? Look at me. Be nice. Like, go Look at me. Oh, where's your I kid at? Clean it for you. Where's your kid at? The short lived explosion, clearly fueled by the early discussed tangibles and alcohol, didn't change Tony's trajectory. He was still looking for blood. Despite his team distancing himself from him, Tony would fly through his final opponent and secure himself a spot in the live finals. Ramsey knows what he's up against. I'm gonna fight him. If I wanna make an example, I'm gonna show everybody this is where I belong. For the honor of the ultimate fighter, Ramsey, and the man is all over. 2037 is the ultimate fighter. We're playing the winner by knockout and the ultimate fighter, season 13 winner. Thank you so much. Congratulations. Look, man. Tony has done what very few fighters could ever dream of 
joining the ranks of legends and future Hall of Famers such as Michael Bisping, Nate Diaz and Kamara Usman as Ultimate Fighter winner. And if smashing his way through the tough house and knocking out his final rival wasn't enough for Tony's 2011, he would go on to drop down to his natural weight class of lightweight and go on to have two more bouts against two veterans of the sport in Aaron Riley, who was 30 and 12 at the time, and Yves Edwards, a true legend who was 47 and 17 at the time. He would win both fights in dominant fashion, and his entrance into the UFC was remarkable and enough to warrant a lengthy break. Halfway across the world, however, a 9-0 Khabib was about to have a very different but equally successful 2011. He would walk through what many consider an easy set of opponents. For example, if you look at Khabib's 14th professional fight, it was against an 0-0 opponent. And when you compare that against Tony's, which was against 41 and 17 Yves Edwards, it calls into question his initial career. I think whilst it's easy to be critical of this record, it's important to remember a lot of fighters start off this way in the regional scene, fighting competition far less than their own talents in order to gain valuable experience. And it's clearly something Khabib father would have pushed. Khabib's initial record is littered with two round decisions against truly inexperienced fighters and it's easy to see why the notion of his early career being padded resonates with a lot of fighters and fans. It's equally just as easy to see the utility in this approach as the future had in store for Khabib not just greatness but a rise through the sport that transcends legend. Either way over the course of 2011 both had earned their way to a spot in the UFC. Post-2011, Tony would break his arm in a bout against Michael Johnson and lose for a third time in his professional career. A moment that would serve as a catalyst for a winning streak through the lightweight division, whilst Khabib would keep his perfect record intact. After a few years in the UFC, they were drawing closer to one another. Twenty fifteen would see Tony and Khabib's fateful fight history start, just one month post Josh Thompson's dismantling in July of that year. Whilst Thompson was left in a pool of his own blood after being carved up by El Kakui's elbows, Khabib was rehabbing his knee after two severe surgeries from a torn meniscus. August would see MMA junkie report that a fight between Khabib and Tony had been put together for the December Tough 22 season final. This news was met with excitement, but not to the extent that you would imagine today. But little did fight fans know that this was the first domino to fall in what would be one of the most historic curses to plague the sport. Khabib, despite being sidelined for two years, was still ranked number two in the division, whilst Tony was sat at number 10 with a win over Josh Thompson. It was a short-lived matchup, however. Just two months later, Khabib would make a post to Instagram, citing a rib injury. It was just another setback in the long line of others that had stalled his career over the recent years. His Instagram details his frustration. The delays were mounting for Khabib, and leaving Leaving the sport for good seemed like the only option he had left. Tony's attention was soon pulled in another direction. He was set to face replacement fighter and number 6 ranked Edson Barboza, who was coming off a thrilling decision victory over Paul Felder. The cancelled fight between Tony and Khabib was nothing out of the ordinary. Fighters withdraw for many reasons all the time. To fight fans this was just another day, just another fight to be disappointed by. Little did they know that this was simply the beginning notes in a symphony that would transcend this sport. Ultimately, Edson was drowned by the pressure of Ferguson. El Kikui was a name on the tip of everyone's tongue after a vicious and bloody beatdown of a tough and flashy Barboza. Just a week after the bloodstains had scabbed over on the canvas, another fight was happening in Vegas which would also change the course of history for Tony and Khabib. Connor would KO the most dominant featherweight champion of all time in just 13 seconds. The world of MMA was witnessing the foundation of what was to be the coming of a messy, fractured, lightweight division for the coming years. Three men were about to take the horns of the most talented, stacked and rich division and drive it into the ground. This is where things start to get a little out of hand, so pay attention because this sport moves fast. January 26th, MMA Fighting announced the second matchup between Khabib and Ferguson. It would take place in April 2016. The fight draws closer and all seems well. Both have gone through a long and arduous training camp. Khabib is anxious to make his return. 5th of April 2016, just 11 days before fight night, Tony Ferguson withdraws from the fight citing lung issues. Khabib faces replacement 12-1 promotional newcomer Daryl Horcher. He wins in dominant fashion, round 
to Ground and Pound, an excellent return to the sport for Khabib. A second cancelled fight etched into the history books for Tony and Khabib, but the UFC marches on. May 5th, Tony is announced to make his comeback against Michael Chiesa on July 13th. June 27th, Michael Chiesa withdraws. June 28th, undefeated lightweight prospect and promotional newcomer Lando Venata steps in on short notice. July 13th, Tony is rocked, but ultimately taps out Lando in round two to a signature Darce choke. September 23rd, Khabib signs a contract to fight champion Eddie Alvarez on either UFC 205 or 206. Three days later, the UFC announces Alvarez will instead face Conor McGregor at UFC 205. McGregor is given the opportunity to become double champion simultaneously the first time in the promotion's history. Khabib was used as a bargaining chip to get the fight made and is given Michael Johnson instead on the same fight card. August 2nd, Tony is scheduled to face Rafael Dos Anjos in December. November 11th rolls around and the UFC sets the stage for the first event to be held in New York. Conor McGregor doesn't disappoint in making history and becomes double champion. On the undercard, Khabib ruthlessly destroys Michael Johnson. December 11th, Tony beats Dos Anjos in a dominant fashion. January 12th, 2017, Conor leaves the sport to pursue boxing. It was a crazy, fast-paced year, and the division changed so much, but Khabib and Tony are finally matched up in the title picture. They have both earned it. They are riding win streaks that are awe-inspiring. They are the best lightweights in the division. In their third matchup together, they will scrap it out for the interim lightweight title in the absence of Conor McGregor. Fight week arrives and the buzz is palpable. Woodley and Thompson are about to throw down again after their first electrifying outing. The co-main event matchup between Tony and Khabib is just the cherry on top of this card. They got pissed him off. Just don't like the guy, he's a bully. Never like bullies like that. The problem is, this fight is cursed. If you like creamy, dreamy desserts, then you have to try my classic tiramisu recipe. Put together in a snap, and there's no baking involved. How many? Three? Three tiramisu. This has been roots. It's going to be creamy, perfectly set, and just amazing. After dinner, three. Yeah, after, after dinner. Yeah. Because see them. We see one before. Before, be, be, before it, we eat tiramisu. <laughs> Look at those layers, so beautiful. Yeah, I have fun with that wig cut. Suck in there. Conditioning sucks. Woo! You got here today, you made weight, and then you found out that the fight was off. The Nurmagomedov has been medically unfit. He has not been cleared to fight for his scheduled 25 minute battle with Tony Ferguson, the UFC. I found out it was due to just, you know, just I'm being unprofessional and stuff. Then it started sinking in. Then I started getting mad, started hitting the bags. And so is this a fight you even want to have? And the fans want to win this fight. A simple tiramisu would be the downfall of a third matchup between Tony and Khabib. It was something that Khabib would be reminded of for the rest of his life. Every Tuesday from that point onwards would be met with a stinging reminder from Tony. Khabib's botched weight cut would prove to be more significant than we could have thought, keeping him sidelined for many months. The reigning champ Conor McGregor was busy training for an unprecedented boxing match against Floyd Mayweather, and Khabib was seriously ill. Many fans were confused as the direction the UFC were to go in. That was until an exchange on Fox Sport between Tony and an up-and-coming phenom in the division. Boxing only, you know, or not doing wrestling, I don't understand it, so uh, let's Look, go. Man, one thing I have to say is, look, to you, congratulations to your fight, but you're calling out Khabib. You're just like Alec Kinta. I can't understand anything that you say. All you're saying is just a whole bunch of hoopla. Yeah, but I'm fighting. You need to get you know, in line. Alan, you Alan need to get in line. So Alan ain't fought you need to in two take years. a ticket you know, I and you need to bleed a little bit. Tony may have trash-talked his way out of a broadcasting job with Fox, but he did instead trash-talk his way into title contention. And the UFC 216 main event, Tony Ferguson takes on Kevin Lee for the interim lightweight title. I saw it already. I fucking beat Khabib without even beating him. It's called mental warfare. As a man, he, he, the man's a weirdo. Like, he, he has been since the beginning. Where uh, will we see the biggest improvement in Tony Ferguson's game, which will allow you to get that belt around your waist? Not being so serious, enjoying the process and then uh, smiling. Uh, this is my time. This is my map. And uh, that kid's got a problem. His name's El Kukui. See you.
With reigning lightweight champ McGregor soon to make his return, and Tony sitting in prime position to get the unification belt as the interim champion, Khabib was left to cement his position in the division and to remind fans and fighters alike he was the next worthy opponent of the winner. In the closing card of December, he would suffocate and wilt Barboza in one of his most dominant performances, leaving no question as to where he belonged. January of the new year, however, would bring with it some rather interesting news, news that would start the beginning of one of the crazy years of MMA. The three giants of the lightweight division were about to set the stage for 18 months of what can only be described as unbridled chaos. In a twist of events that no one saw coming, the UFC made plans to strip McGregor of his title after being out of the sport for too long. They instead chose a fourth matchup between Tony and Khabib, this time for the undisputed lightweight championship. Belt or no belt, this fight was gonna happen. Guarantee it, we're both gonna make weight. I know he missed what, half a pound his last weigh-in, so that's gonna be staring at him right in the face. We're gonna fight for a real belt. You know, 10 win streak versus 25 win streak. Let's go. You're gonna face the boogeyman, I'm giving you one chance to quit, to walk away and fucking retire. Uh, to, be, to be honest, I didn't understand your English, you know, you talk like stupid guy. I'm actually working now as I'm talking. What are you doing? <laughs> Fucking stuff in your face full of tiramisu? It's not even Tuesday, guys. <laughs> hey, nobody understand your English, bro. Calm down, please. Relax. So why are you nervous? So why? We, we just talk. I was supposed to fight before a couple times. He injured, I have injured. But now, like six days before fight, finally, I hope we're gonna fight. Unfortunately, this is not an April Fool's joke. Tony Ferguson has pulled out of the fight. He's injured, he hurt his knee. But the beautiful thing about this sport, the stud 145 pound champion Max Holloway is gonna step up and face Khabib. How much notice did they give you for that? Six days. Six days. Yeah. First thing that happens when I land, I'm fucking meeting with a fucking not even the UFC doctor, a doctor from um, from New York Commission. Every single fucking day, they're gonna check up on us. Now what made Max the right guy for this fight? You know, when everything went down, we know Brian Ortega was interested. You may have had some other backup plans as well. What made Max the guy? Fight in five years, hasn't been taken down in four years. Has the most finishes in the 145 pound division, and he's a fucking stud. And said yes, and comes in and fights Khabib on one week's notice. That makes him the man. I'm like, bro, I'm like four pounds away from making the weight. And I, I'm going to, like, it's, it's tough, but I'm going to get there. They come in and they check, and we have like hours left before the weigh-ins to get, you know what I mean? They come in, they check, they looked at me, and they said, you don't look good, you can't do it. Holloway is out of the fight, unfit to fight, they said. Tell me where, where, and that's it. He's going to jail. I just saw you in the hotel lobby Crazy. a couple of hours ago, and now you are fighting Khabib in the main event. Um, talk to me about how all of this came together for you. Oh man, I I don't even know. It just happened so fast, you know. <laughs> Things. Uh, I heard Max was out, and I was said, "I'm in. Let's go." Connor, why'd you do it? Connor, you have an anger problem. What a week this is, man. Thanks for hanging in there with us. Al, I went to and Felder were demanding the fight. You know where Al is ranked. You know, his last five fights, he made the most sense. It's time! All right, gentlemen, we've been through the rules in the locker room. Watch me my commands at all time. Watch protect yourselves at all time. Rumblings, he might try to do some offensive wrestling early. Two knees to the neck. His back again. You can't give up your back like that. Look how he grabs the back leg. Turning on his side, fine front. Oh! Oh! And new undisputed UFC lightweight champion of the world, Khabib, the Eagle, Nirvana. 
UFC 223 proved to be one of the craziest in the fight promotion's history. Out of that chaos strode Khabib with the lightweight championship in tow. Connor, the lightweight champion, and Tony, the interim champion, would both be stripped of their championship titles. And now the question was, what would the UFC pursue? The rightful and earned fifth matchup between Tony and Khabib? Or the money fight with Conor McGregor? Well, those who know Dana White and the UFC well already know which option made more sense. Come here for smash this guy. I don't Smash me, talk. mate. You say send your lo send location. Here he is, right here in front of you. I'm right in front of you. Did you not see me at the outside the bus? No. Did you not see me right in front of you outside the fucking bus? I'm gonna pick him apart and bully him in there and absolutely maul him. Shut your mouth, Ali Abdul Aziz, my terrorist, Ali, Ali, terrorist yes, snitch. Ali. I know a lot about you as well. You might rock. How's Noah? How's Noah? Huh? Yeah. Shut your mouth. Never speak about me. Fuck you, fool. Don't come at that kid! Tony Ferguson's back, his leg look butchered. It's amazing how quick he came back from that surgery. It's amazing, man. It's been five months since my injury. It took a long fucking time for me to be here. They took my belt, they took a bunch of zeros from my paycheck. How do you think I fucking feel? This is just another start of opponent. I believe he's slow, he's flat-footed. His striking is very average. He may have wrestled Dagestani Bears, but he has never wrestled an Irish Gorilla Conan, and that's what he's about to face on Saturday night. I'm angry, a little bit emotional, but my, my job, when I go to the cage, I have to control my emotional, I have to stay relaxed, but keep going and mold this guy. I'm the fucking champ. See this gold right here? I didn't lose my belt. <clears throat> they took it from me. The one thing they didn't take was my smile. We're gonna keep this clean. Touch gloves now if you wish. Oh! Turn around. Khabib looking to complete the takedown and he gets it. This fight is advertised so oh! That's it right from the Mongo Bell! He's gonna shower it with one here on the move. Wow! Oh, massive crowd strikes here. Herbie watching closely. Khabib is trying to smash his face. Hands broken. Yeah, that's it. Broke his hand. So that's wow. the fight. from Tony Ferguson. And now Khabib jumps the fence. Whoa! No! And he's going right at Dylan Dennis! Mayhem! Oh no! Oh! And now one of Nurmagomedov's Medov teammates throws a right hand at Connor! All hell is broken loose! Khabib jumping out of the octagon like that and attacking someone in the crowd. And I think, I mean, that is so stupid and so unnecessary and so foolish. Khabib's brawl cost him dearly, with a hefty suspension from the sport. The UFC wasn't about to slow down for this either. They had pay-per-views to fill, so they sought to put Tony in contention for the interim title again, after his bloodbath win over Anthony Pettis, this time against featherweight champion Max Holloway, who was seeking a return to the weight class after the mess that was UFC 223. If Tony's luck couldn't get any worse, his management talked him out of the fight, the same management that Connor was the poster child of, in retrospect, Tony was convinced they told him not to take the fight because Connor had manipulated the management into screwing him over. Either way, it was a bad call from his team. The UFC didn't care for politics either. Whether he would take the fight or not was inconsequential to them. They had fights to sell, so they moved on to another lightweight who was blazing through the division, Dustin Poirier. Unsurprisingly, after everything that happened to Tony over the last few years, it had all finally reached a boiling point. The man had a mentality carved from stone, but there is only so much one person can take. From his seemingly corrupt management team taking advantage, the organisation he bled and cried for turning their back on him multiple times, it all finally broke him, and Tony faded into the shadows, his mental health shattered. It was a dark time for the lightweight division. The last 18 months had shown how volatile the sport can be, and how egos of promotion Motors, fighters and management companies can destroy the integrity of this sport, putting on freak show fights that don't progress the division in any way. Dustin Poirier would go on to defeat Max Holloway, 
making himself the interim champion and the next mandatory fight for Khabib when his suspension would come to an end. This guarantee meant that Tony was relegated once again to fight for his top contender spot in the division. If his recovery from his knee surgery wasn't indicative of his mental resilience, then his return from his mental health episode certainly was. Tony was booked for June 8th against Donald Cerrone, and in typical El Kakui fashion, he sliced up and beat down Donald Cerrone in an exciting performance. His place in the division was once again defended. Khabib would not disappoint either, retaining his belt in dominant fashion, and for the first time in front of his father, the rock in his life that moulded him to become the greatest the division had ever seen. Tony and Khabib are the itch that never goes away, and the stars were aligned once more in stubborn fashion. The last four years had shown that no matter who stood in front of them, they would crumble and fall. The lightweight division was theirs. Fight after fight, they proved they were the unmovable object and the unstoppable force, threatening to collide with one another, but just missing by millimetres each time. Dana White had no choice, however. This was the fight to make. Regardless of curses or superstition, both were riding unheard of 12 fight winning streaks against the who's who of a cutthroat division. This fight was the most interesting, exciting and hyped fight the UFC had to offer. And so the news broke. He's a bully. He's never been in a street fight, never actually been thrown into a trash can or like any kind of shit like that. So now you're street fight, I can eat you. Hey, hey, sunglasses. In street fight, I can eat you. You understand? No, Who are you? You never fight in street. You American guy. In American, you cannot fight in street. There we go. He I am from right. Rio Mountain. Khabib versus Tony is the toughest fight of Khabib's career. I really believe that. I think Tony Ferguson is a nightmare for anybody, especially right now. The fifth matchup between Tony and Khabib was short-lived. deadly coronavirus. Now, a short time ago, the World Health Organization declared the outbreak an international public Monday health Monday in China, it suffered its highest number of deaths. Ferguson versus Khabib Nurmagomedov just was called off. Fifth time. We're moving forward with all our UFC live events. When did this first pop up on your radar that you might fight Tony Ferguson? The coronavirus had Khabib stuck in Russia, resulting in the fifth cancellation of their bout. It's almost as if the universe itself had a design to keep Tony and Khabib separated from one another. Regardless of Khabib's situation, the UFC marched on without him, and after a short-lived lockdown due to the pandemic, the UFC announced an interim title matchup between Tony and Justin to determine who would face Khabib on his eventual return. It would, however, prove to be the final nail in the coffin of the greatest fight to never happen. We've been over the rules, protect ourselves all the time, follow the instructions. We touch balls and do it. Remember, we did this, guys, for you, so uh, bring the sports back, and uh, hopefully you guys enjoy the fight, man. Ferguson, I mean, he's always going to be Tony Ferguson. He's one of the toughest men that's ever walked the face of the earth. But I think he was preparing for a grappler. You know, he's preparing for uh, Khabib Nurmagomedov. Now, at this moment, he's in the hospital. His is very difficult. He's on the front of this virus. Это, этот вирус ему дало на сердце, так как мы ему год назад делали операцию на сердце. Ему сейчас заново сделали операцию. Так что у него такое тяжелое положение, очень тяжелое. Просим Аллаха, чтобы Аллах вернул его к нам тоже. Abdul Manap meant to him. Yeah. This was their journey together. 
you know, I, I, I hope he fights. I just don't know. Like, I don't know. Like I said, you know, it's going to take, he's going to have to muster up a lot of strength. With Khabib's return doubtful in the wake of his father's death, and Tony's career seemingly ground to a halt, the lightweight division was left with two very big holes. But these men are made from more than we could ever possibly imagine, and at their lowest, they had more to give. Tony Ferguson is going to fight Charles Oliveira on UFC 256 as the co-main event champion. Can Justin Gaethje get it done for the winner? By unanimous decision, Charles! And Lance for Ibaco, that off. About two minutes have gone by. There's that patented leg kick. There's no words for this shit, man. We're going to go out there and get this victory. Oh, nice body shot. The left hook up top from Gaethje. He's not even defending. Michael Chandler is going to be fighting Tony Ferguson. Oh, he's going triangle here. Set the triangle into the armbar. They are intending to Tony Ferguson. Out cold. Oh, my goodness. Tony Ferguson is out cold. Oh, my goodness. He's tapping. It looks like he's tapped. He's tapped. Oh. Michael Medov. The eagle rises again. He chokes Justin Gaethje to sleep. Legend in the game gets knocked out in one of the most horrific fashions. Bottling up a lot of those emotions here during this fight week without his late father, Abdulmanab Nurmagomedov. And Today is my last fight here in the UFC. Regardless of how this story ends, the sun will ultimately set on two men who became legends. Two men that despite never crossing paths in the octagon, left us with a legacy that inspires us to carry on despite adversity, pain, loss and suffering. Two tales that tell us it's not where we are born or how we are raised that dictates the path we blaze. These two men show us that in spite of setbacks, fear and naysayers, we can conquer dreams with hard work dedication and resilience. The fight that could have been, should have been, doesn't matter. We are left with so much more.